I, so I'd like to start out talking about um, my past a little bit. So I'm, I'm dyslexic. I've had addiction problems, alcohol and drugs my almost entire life. Uh, anxiety, like all of us have. Depression, um, nervous breakdown, a couple concussions, separation from my family at a different time, a little stint in rehab. And throughout this time, overcoming this, I was really insecure. And I was, my drive came from trying to overcome that. And it wasn't until maybe 10 years ago that I was sowing this benefit. And I still thought I was stupid and lazy because that's kind of what I was told when I was younger. But I'm making a quarter million dollars for 10 years in a row. I'm not stupid and lazy at this point in my life. And I'm like, okay, I'm not stupid and lazy. Well, what the fuck's going on? And I couldn't really turn it because that was my kryptonite and also my superpower was this like, okay, I'm going to prove to everybody that I'm the man. I'm going to just work and work and work. I've started three companies in this town from Durham Catering, Only Burger, and Rise. And I pushed and pushed and pushed. And I'm a workaholic in a box, exactly workaholic. And I'm married and I have three daughters and I haven't really paid the attention to them that I needed to. And I was pushing it. And how many people here are entrepreneurs? A good amount? Okay. And you have a drive to reach a dream and something that you want to achieve and whatever that is if it's a number or if it's a certain feeling that you have mine was a number and when I reached that number I popped champagne and my wife and I celebrated and I woke up the next day and I felt exactly the same as I did the day before and that was a really letdown to me because I'd worked on that for 30 years I had been a good high school football player I was an airborne ranger in the army I traveled all around the United States cooking in the best kitchens around the country I started three businesses this one was franchising it was blowing up and money didn't mean shit what did mean something was helping the people behind me and I was helping these people behind me and sharing my story and sharing my truth and trying to keep them from having the same road bumps that I had kind of like Speedy Racer fans like Racer X did for Speedy, I was trying to help them out whenever they reached something that happened. Yet I wasn't really taking care of myself. So I found myself with a bucket full of money, unfulfilled, pushing as hard as I could, trying to learn everything I could about franchising, going to seminars, going to Tony Robbins, having mentors, going to all these, reading every book I could read on the subject, learning as much as I could, a hockey puck turn of knowledge, and then some things happened in my life that I didn't have any room in my glass for. I had an issue with my partner. I had some problems with my wife. And I didn't have any coping mechanisms. And I just went off the deep end in addiction and found myself in rehab in Malibu. I uh, graduated from rehab in Malibu, graduated uh, about a year and a half ago, came back, separated from my wife, and then still went back down that dark place because I found myself really, really lonely for the first time in my life because I'd never lived by myself. I didn't give respect to loneliness like I give respect to loneliness now. I spent every time in my life from when I went into the military, moved out of my house, moved, went to the military, had a girlfriend, then had a girlfriend, then got married. I always lived with someone. I'd never been by myself, but I moved around the country for about six months with Rise trying to get away and figure out what was going on, and this loneliness kicked me in the ass. So then I go, this is December of last year, I go to a doctor, and for the first time, I'm ready to get some type of drug from a doctor. And I'm like, just give me a fucking pill. And he's like, Tom, you're not quite bipolar. You're in that spectrum. You're not really an addict in the classic sense. What you need is a fucking hobby. And I go, well, I've been a member of a club for 15 years playing golf. I'm the worst golfer there. I just quit. I would play nine holes, play like shit, then I'd get drunk the second nine. I said, I've always thought about bird watching. And he goes, bird watching? He started laughing at me. I go, I go, are you laughing? He said, well, you know, I just, do you really see yourself slowing down enough to bird watch? And I go, is this a fucking challenge? <laughs> <laughs> I know how to deal with that. And he, so I go home and I immerse myself in everything birding. I joined three clubs. I joined the Carolina Bird Club. I joined Chapel Hill Bird Club. I joined the New Hope Audubon. I go search for equipment. I watch all these YouTube videos. I buy my scope. I buy my binoculars. I research everything like I never had before. I'm in this brand new world because believe me, I never fucking looked at a bird before really. There are brown ones and there are black ones and there are white ones. But now I'm gonna be a, 
I want to be a birder. And so I make this proclamation on Facebook. I'm going to be a birder, a bird watcher, because I was still calling it bird watcher then. And this guy says, you got to read the big ear. So I go, well, what's the big ear? So then I, anybody here know what the big ear is? All right, you're going to get a birding fix here. So I read it, and there's this competition that's over 100 years old about counting the most birds you can in North America in a calendar year starting on January 1st. This is December 17th when I met with a doctor. I'm like, okay, it's on. So I sign up for this trip to the Outer Banks. I'm going to New York with my family for Christmas. So I sign up for an owl watching tour in Central Park on Christmas Day. The day before Christmas Eve, I'm at Ellis Island, and that's where I take the picture of my first bird. And I'm like, I'm freaking hooked. I get emotional. Because I think birds saved my life. And the message I want to tell you guys is that you know, get a fucking hobby <laughs> was like the best piece of advice I'd ever gotten in my entire life. Now, I went back to my doctor, and I started seeing birds, and I learned about e-bird and counting birds, but I still didn't know birds. So I'm looking at them, and I'm taking pictures, and I have my little Fuji camera that I used to take pictures of donuts with, and now I fucking hate donuts, so I'm still taking pictures of birds. And I buy this big lens, and the big lens I break when I'm in, in um, Tennessee, and then I get a smaller lens, and then I break it. And I'm like, what am I doing? So then I buy a really nice Nikon camera and another big lens, and now I'm pretty deep into this hobby, and I've got pictures of birds, and I'm watching myself accelerate. And I'm going up the ranks in Eber, and Eber's got a, you know, a million users worldwide. And so it ranks you for how many birds you see in Durham, how many birds you see in North Carolina, how many birds you see in the United States. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to show them. And it's like or, the big years that count. And everybody would say, well, are you doing a big year? I'm like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to set the rookie record in birding. That's what I'm trying to do. So I can't even really identify them. I take a picture, I get behind my computer, and I do this stuff to figure out what the birds are, and then I count them. Well, I've been to nine states now looking at birds. I've been, to, I've been into Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Savannah. I've been on trips all through Florida. I just got back from southeastern Arizona last week, along with Texas, High Island. I was in, on Saturday, I was uh, bird watching in Central Park in New York. And right now I have 237 birds counts. If you, no one here seems to know much about birding. But that ranks me 1,260 something in the United States. It ranks me um, like 60-something in Durham and like 140-something in North Carolina, which is pretty freaking respectable for someone who just picked up this hobby. Now, and I don't know, and I'm getting towards the end of this story, but I fucking love birds. <laughs> I saw a bird today. I was at an NA meeting because I'm you know, I'm sober right now, and I'm going to a meeting, and there's this killdeer bird, and it's out of place because I've only seen them at the coast, and I've seen them in, in Florida, and I've seen them in North Carolina coast, and I've seen them in Texas, but it's sitting there in this little field across, and I'm like, wow, what's that bird doing here, and it's here by itself, and I'm like, well, that's fucking cool. Now, I have it. It's already in my count, so it's not a new bird, but it's out of place. I'm out of place a little bit. I'm, when I went back to my doctor after he told me to get a hobby, I went back to my mother and said, yeah, I did this, and I did this. He said, well, we're going to have to watch you to make sure you're not hypermanic. And I'm going to go, hypermanic? I can fucking live with that. I'm hypermanic. So now I have a site that I've started called Hypermanic Birdman. <laughs> I have a podcast uh, that I do with a friend of mine, Hardy Merritt. It's called uh, Ninja and the Birdman, and you guys can go check us out at ninjaandthebirdman.com. We put up our first episode a couple days ago. And I'm getting ready to explore starting a bird club here in Durham called D-Town Bird Club. I want to expose as many people as I can to birds, but not only birds, but a hobby. Because your family's not your hobby. Your business isn't your hobby. And if you start looking at it that way, you're going to end up like me in rehab in Malibu, which wasn't so bad. Because you're going to learn a lot of cool hippy-dippy shit. You're going to learn how to meditate. You're going to learn how to relax. And you're going to learn how to do some stuff. But it doesn't carry you through life. And I'm only four months into birding. Yeah, four months. Just finished four months. I'm ranked pretty good in birding. I'm going to keep going. I go to an adult birding camp in West Virginia at the end of May, and I'll start a bird club sometime this summer, and I would love anybody who wants to know about this to come join it. But my message to you is don't burn the fuck out, man. Don't burn out. You only have so much. Don't fill your glass all the way to the top, because when it fills to the top, you can't take any shit. You can't take anything else, and you're going to burn out. So heed my message. Watch birds and prosper. Thank you.